hello everyone uh, today I'll be doing I have done a project basically on Java messaging services with ActiveMQ I've created a Maven project and used the Java messaging services jars in classes with ActiveMQ to generate a receiver and sender architecture using Java at JMS okay yeah, in the first step what I have done is uh, I have downloaded the ActiveMQ server from this website and the latest world is uh, latest binary distribution okay and I have saved that file in this location after doing after unzipping it and then uh, I opened the CMD as an admin administrator and I've pl placed this path in, in CMD I'll show you Now I'll be now to 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 start the ActiveMQ server. We need to type ActiveMQ and then hit enter. So it's get, getting started. It's accessing the uh, home base config data config and data resides over here. I'll show you. But yeah. See config data, and to to like uh, to to change the values, we 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 can we can change uh, to like uh, customize the server. We'll be using this file activemq. Dot xml. Here. Uh, we can we can like change certain properties uh, we'll check it we'll check this later okay so let's go to sorry yeah uh, let's check yeah now our active server uh, MQ server is up and running at this IP and port let's go to that IP and port first and then get into the coding part They will be asked for the username and password. The username is admin, and the password is also admin. Okay, so we are able to check the, uh, get into the landing page. Uh, we'll see if, if there are any active MQ, M, M, any active servers are there or not. Any queues are there or not? So I click on queues. Okay, there is one queue with name Ashish queue so I will delete it okay so no queues are present fine so let's go let's see then yeah open the browser and then navigate to this we did now configuring the receiver and sender is using JMS see JMS is a basically library or we can say API where which provides which provides an easy way to connect to a MQ server and internally what JMS does is it creates a connection factory object which in turn creates a connection object then the connection we start the connection then uh, with the help of connection we get the session object what session does is it creates a producer object and a con consumer object also a message object um, it can be a text message or user object message anything that I'll show you how to do that and the producer message producer um, is sent to a destination and consumer also is sent to a destination and these two destinations are basically the MQ server okay so this way JMS internally works now uh, the challenges I faced during the project I had to explicitly use the dependency SLF4G logging
because uh, this active mq i'm using with maven like i'm not using any framework to do this um, either spring or spring boot uh, whereas slf4j comes uh, comes with spring and spring boot easily that's why um, i had to uh, explicitly add it to the dependency fold um, dependency xml second the use of serialization in data object i had to use a serialization in data object i'll show you how it happened yeah what i had to do so let's go to the coding part hmm. so this is my maven project and these are the packages which i have created the main package contains the app.java is inside the main package here what i have done I'll, yeah i'll show you for the connection connection class wait in the connection yeah hmm. inside the connection class i have a connection factory object connection object then session object and then destination object i'll yeah a destination object is this object okay and the producer object and consumer object is dependent like in uh, dependent so i so i have used this entire objects i have uh, created entire object in, inside a class so that i can use the same class for this this producer object and consumer object okay see this is the connection class and this is the method which we'll be using for both producer and receiver inside that i have created a output service object output service does is basically it returns now it contains a session and destination which will be needing in producer and consumer objects so from here uh see if initially i we, we were having a kind of factory object uh, we'll get a factory object with this the default broker url is wait okay this is the url which uh, the uh, broker uses internally M messaging queue basically now uh, with this factory we are getting a connection i have started the connection then with the help of connection we have a session object and from that session object we have uh, we have a destination defined and this destination is basically a queue with the name uh let me write it as ashish q1 okay yeah and that destination object i have passed it to output service and session service okay so and then i did few sys out so to confirm the connections and if there is any failure then it will print this fail to connect to q okay so that's it from the connection class so uh, i uh, i will be returning a destination and session destination is same for both that will be this this queue and session session will uh, session will give us the type of object uh, like type of data which will be sending say for example if i go to session class and see create byte message map message or just normal message or object message or text message okay so i have used create object message but that will be created through session right so i have to pass session to the user object so i'm done from connection class so let's move out of it and let's get back to sender class here uh, we'll be getting a session and uh, we have a producer object uh, which is this object okay now uh, and a connection as well just to create the connection and a user data um, to like the data which will be sending okay so this is the sent message where the actually everything will be happening i have got a new connection class new connection object from that connection i have got the output which we are which we set over there 
then from that output we got a session and then from that session we got a producer producer with this destination okay now what happening is see this is the object data type my data type will be object type so this is the object message which will be sending and inside that i have set the object as user data user data is the user data a user data user pojo which will be sending with which will be having user id and username okay and after that producer sends the object and inside that i had a i did a sysout to see what the data which i am which data i am passing and one one thing uh, to note down is that i have implemented runnable class so this is the run method and inside that method i have passed the send message method okay so sender what it does is it uh, it takes the connection then creates a session then a producer and in, with the help of session we are getting sending the object we are creating the ob message object and then passing it to the producer okay so now let's go to the receiver part in receiver also i have implemented the runnable method imp interface uh, inside that run method i have passed the receive message method inside this method also i am calling and uh, getting the connection object then the output services then the session consumer and here message see uh, if i go into receive receive method sorry okay so i have got the um, i have got the message object okay so message object uh, i'm checking if this is null this is not equals to null or not if that is n not null then uh, i'm i'll be getting the object i'll be getting the object which i have passed and that and i have casted it to user data yeah see this get object returns a serializable serializable interface like serializable class okay so that's when i had to like implement serializable in this case okay so now which now that i have got the data i uh, like i will be have i have sussed out the data simply in the console so like this is done from uh from the coding part and i'll show you the uh, pom.xml ones what dependencies which i have used for this yeah see this is the active mq dependency the corresponding jars are like from starting from here to here and then sl4 api alpha 1 and alpha 0 must be these two certain jars okay so let's run the project and see the output inside main yeah the uh, see uh, this this logging message is used internally within the jms sorry within the act, a, mq server from there it is getting printed and now you can see connected to queue like uh, when i'm sending the message the message message sent is this ashish user id 1 name ashish okay and then when i am connected to the um, consumer it is the sorry uh, i am then connected to the consumer and then another and the consumer received the message which is same which is which has been passed to by the sender okay i'll show you the main class ones inside main i have created a user data object inside that i am passing two values
सेकेंड Okay, no issues. Yeah, I'm passing the two um, values. Now I have a sender object. Sender takes the user data, and uh, I have created a thread. And with that, I'm pass the run method with up the thread. And same goes for the receiver object and the receiver thread. And lastly, this is out left main, and we can see left main. So. the mq has done its task and uh, its job we we'll just go and verify once see the queue name is q1 ashish q1 and number of consumers one message in queue message dq no pending messages right now let's say if uh, if i like stop this receiver or i i'll just comment this receiver and run it again yeah this data is sent from the sender but it's not consumed yet let's see what happens now message is enqueued to but message dequeued only one there is one message pending it has not been accepted yet we can see active producers one yeah this is the active producer but when it comes to consumer we won't be having any consumer now see no consumer once i uncomment this and rerun this Yep, we can see number of pending messages one, number of consumers one, message in queue three, message in queue two. Previously it was two and one, now it's three and two. Uh, we have many other operations: send to, purge, delete or pause. I'm not going into all this. Uh, uh, so this is how an active mq works and thank you guys uh, uh, i'll now what i'll be doing is i'll be uh, like optimizing this project a bit more so that i we can learn more about from it and secondly we'll be using the aws mq and also apache kafka in my next tutorial okay thank you